¡Bienvenidos a El Salvador! Bienvenido aquí a El Salvador. Welcome to El Salvador. Bienvenidos a El Salvador. Welcome to El Salvador. Welcome to El Salvador. Welcome to El Salvador, the land of volcanoes, absolutely stunning natural beauty and papusas. I'm really excited to show you this beautiful country, but needs a little bit of prep. So as usual, this is my ultimate travel guide for El Salvador. Let's get exploring. El Salvador is an easy visa category country and most likely you're not just coming to El Salvador, you're also going to neighboring countries. You don't need special visas just for El Salvador, especially if you're North American or you're South American or you're European. I honestly haven't looked at other countries, but I don't think getting a visa for El Salvador is very difficult. The entry process is also quite easy. You're given custom forms and I mean, I just breezed through the airport, the immigration officers, customs, everyone was really nice and friendly. El Salvador is part of CA4 countries, which is Nicaragua, Honduras, Guatemala and El Salvador and if you get a visa I believe for one of them you can visit all four countries for 90 days in total which is not 90 days for each country but like 90 days in all for one visit for all four countries which is really really convenient isn't it? There is only one airport in the country that's probably you will land or if you're coming by road um, there's land borders but the airport is not close to the city of San Salvador, so it will take you a little bit of time and about $30, $40 to get there. Roads here are surprisingly really good. Some of the best in Central America, apparently. So if you like to drive and you're a good driver, that is literally the best option. Hiring the car is also the cheaper option. Public transport, unfortunately, is pretty much unusable for two reasons. For number one, safety, because everyone I ask locally us like vehemently sort of discouraged me to use public transport because you could be robbed at any point and they don't care how many people are around so it could turn into like a very dangerous situation really quickly so i unfortunately couldn't get on a chicken bus which are these colorful buses that they have here in el salvador the second reason is no one really knows the timings the routes the schedules they're not written anywhere so you need like local knowledge unfortunately to use those so yeah i also got discouraged for that so i'm not a good driver but um if you are going to do that i would recommend checking if the your rental includes the gas or not and if you are like me and you're getting um, a car with a driver or tours um, you also again need to check if it's a car with a driver whether that includes gas or not but on average it's going to cost you around $80 to $100 a day for a car with a driver. It's not cheap. So hiring the car is the best option when it comes to El Salvador. You can use Uber in pretty much every big city and it's a pretty reliable source. I haven't come across any other apps. So for taxi, Uber is really good here. Also, make sure you choose cash because the taxi drivers will cancel on you if it's a long trip and you're paying by car. This is the currency of El Salvador. Now you might recognize this as the currency of United States of America and that's correct. El Salvador abolished their own currency and they use US dollars as their currency. I'm going to talk about Bitcoin in a little bit. So um, everything's charged, paid for in US dollars. 
no one uses the old currency. I haven't seen it anywhere, um, apart from maybe in a museum somewhere. Okay, how expensive is El Salvador? And surprisingly, El Salvador is actually quite expensive. I wasn't expecting that at all, uh, but on an average day, if you want to have a good day, you will need about 70 to 80 dollars. And if you're hiring your own car, yeah, that's a bit more than that even. And if you're going with tours on an average, the tours, if it's a group tour, starts from 40 to 50 dollars which is a lot more than a lot of other developing countries, but that's how it is. On average, a meal would cost you in a normal restaurant about 10-ish dollars. If you're going to a more fancy place, 25 to 50 dollars, okay? So that's about how expensive El Salvador is. Let's move on to the banks. There's a lot of banks here, a lot. And you can withdraw money from there, but I've used three, uh, Bank Pro Merico. Atlantida and um, Hipotecario, Hipotecario, I don't remember which one is the correct pronunciation, but these are the banks that didn't charge me any um, transaction fees. There's a lot of ATMs everywhere and it's not difficult to withdraw money. Um, in terms of card payments, they're also very common and contactless payments are also very, very common here and there's no transaction fees of any kind or any minimum limits. So you can easily use your card here. Like my bank allows me to do unlimited international transactions worldwide without any fees and I'm taking full advantage of that. Now, let's talk about Bitcoin. El Salvador is the only country as of now, 2021, which accepted Bitcoin as its legal tender. So if you wanna spend Bitcoin here, I have some good and bad news. There are machines here where you can buy Bitcoin but in practice, it's actually not so easy to use Bitcoin here. And I'm not sure what the infrastructure is like here, but I haven't really tried using it because like most people, I haven't gotten my head around it. I've seen machines where you can buy Bitcoins and there are places where you can pay with Bitcoin. But on like generally in the country, um, the infrastructure is not there and it is the people are also not ready for Bitcoin here yet, unfortunately. So my experience with Bitcoin, I wanted to learn here a bit more, but everyone who I asked, they do, don't really know much either. So if you want to come and spend here, um, I would recommend not relying on it as the only source of payment here. Other than that, I think you're, you're free to experiment with that. Should you get a guide when you come to El Salvador? Honestly, you don't need it. Um, I mean, the country obviously has history and you can read about it online, but there's nothing like in such in-depth detail that you require like a constant guide around you. Most of the times it's kind of like a shared car service, then a proper like guide thing when you do these things in here so in san salvador i found a really nice guy called juan from miramundo tour who was the best um, when it comes to showing around and also price wise as well in santa ana i basically just hired people through the hotel and that's usually the easiest way to deal with this so if you're driving on your own you don't need a guide in el salvador El Salvador has come a long way from the days when there were like 50, 60, 100 murders a day and there were gangs and rivalries and shootings and it was just a very unsafe place for traveling. I say that because in the last 10 years it has improved a lot. I'm not saying it's a place like, you know, in Europe where you would just go and have a good time, but it has become much, much, much better. And I read a lot about how it's very unsafe and there's like murders every day. And honestly, that was not a good thing. I, I did a little bit of disservice to myself because I got a bit paranoid, which is not a good thing. So there are a few things you can do to limit your exposure and make this visit for yourself very safe. So after dark, things are a big no-no, especially if you're traveling on your own. I, I mean, I'm also not a nightlife person. I don't really go bars, clubs, but that really saved me right here. But if you are going for something like that, 
make local friends, go with them. They're very friendly people and I mean, it's, they're really approachable and it's really easy to make local friends. Especially if you're staying through Airbnb, that's a good um, thing to do. Going on chicken buses, <laughs> I know it's a big money saver, but I was told I was dissuaded again and again and again by the locals not to get on those because you could be robbed. Stay in the more upscale areas. Um, I know they might be a bit more expensive and go with like downtown, etc., in San Salvador with locals. That's the best way to, to travel. Um, if you step into dangerous areas, yeah, that could be a little bit of a problem. It could be really dangerous. So check with someone local before you step into an area or just go with locals. They know what they're doing or where you're going. Um, I would also recommend driving on your own. Um, but if you do that, not after dark and it would be good if you have other people with you. Generally, honestly, I've not felt like unsafe here at a point where I felt like I should not have come here. It was my own paranoia more than anything else. So if you're coming here, take a few of these precautionary steps. Come with your friends if, you, if that makes you feel more safe. But do come to El Salvador. This country does, definitely does re deserve a visit. And you should definitely not cancel it on the basis of safety alone. So El Salvador is moderately safe to visit. So which SIM card should you buy when you come to El Salvador? I got Claro because that was recommended and also it has the most extensive network coverage throughout the country. So I would recommend getting that. It's worked pretty well and it's also quite cheap. I think it cost me about $10 for the two weeks that I spent here and I almost didn't run out of data the whole time. Um, in terms of internet, it's generally pretty good here. The speed is good and Wi-Fi is generally available pretty much everywhere. Every cafe, every restaurant that I went to, they had good Wi-Fi. So if you're working remotely, yeah, El Salvador is a pretty good location for that as well. So, um, but a friend of mine told me that it's, it's also good uh, with Tigo. So you can get either Claro or Tigo. It's entirely up to you. Um, you can also buy the SIM cards at the airport and they should be registered to your name. Let's talk about the people of El Salvador. Now, most of the people who live in the developing world are really nice and El Salvadorians are no exception. It is the smiles, the, the welcoming attitude that is really, really refreshing. And I mean, if you're coming from Europe or North America, it actually feels extra nice and everyone tries to make you feel welcome. They, you know, even if they don't know the language, they will try their best to help you. Um, I'm really thankful for everyone who showed me around. Um, Hugo, um, Christina, Saul, David, everyone and everyone I came across has been super, super nice. I have not come across anyone who was horrible to me. So people of El Salvador, a massive thank you. And if you're coming here, do expect them to be really nice and sweet. And this is one of the residents who's sleeping, but he was extra sweet as well. So the language here in El Salvador is very firmly Spanish and you need some basic level of Spanish to get by, especially if you like, you know, going around, like eating street food and all. So Duolingo was really helpful. I just got on and I understand a little bit, which makes life easy. And I would recommend doing the same to you. Most of the people who speak English here are related to the US or to North America, generally Canada, US. So yeah, um, and they are the ones who work in tourism. So download Spanish on your Google or Apple Translate apps. It's really going to help you, I promise. So what's the best time to come to El Salvador? The best time is to come between late November and March. And this is a time when it's dry season and the rainy season has finished. So everything is nice and green and it's all very lush and you get really good temperature for that amazing tan that you want, right? 
So it's also a good time to go to the beach. So yeah, late November to March is the perfect time to come to El Salvador. How many days for El Salvador? Yes, it looks like a small country on the map, but there's quite a lot on offer here. And if you want a good wholesome Salvadorian experience, I would recommend no less than five days. I'm doing two weeks here and before moving to Guatemala and I'm doing it a little slow, you know, but I still know there are places I could have done more. So um, five days is an absolute minimum. A week is generally an optimal amount. Any more than that is up to you. But do keep in mind if you're coming from Europe, it takes a little bit of time to, to adjust to your body clock. So I factored that in and that's why I'm spending a bit longer here. So yeah, five days minimum. You cannot drink tap water here. You have to buy bottled water. Or there's a lot of places where you can use the filters. So people have filters installed. For example, my Airbnb has that. So I can just, you know, drink water from that. It's especially good because there's a lot of plastic pollution problem here. I've seen bottles everywhere. So if you're, if you're going out, you're using plastic bottles, please make sure one, you get the big ones and two, you don't leave them around once you're back. They use the US or Australian style plugs here. These ones, so come prepared for that. It's quite heartbreaking to see so much trash on the beaches and a lot of places, especially plastic. And that was like one of the things I didn't like in El Salvador. So I really hope if you're coming here, um, you take care of the environment you're in. And if anyone from El Salvador is listening, please, 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 you have a very beautiful country, take care of it. Google Maps does not work very well in El Salvador. I would recommend using Waze if you're going to travel or if you're just going around, I think for walking around, Google is fine. When you come to El Salvador, make sure you do bring some insect repellent, especially if you're going to places that have insects like any place with vegetation, because I didn't use it despite having it. And look what has happened to me. These bites are not fun and I've been scratching myself crazy the whole time. Oh. If you're here in summer like me, that is from late November to March, make sure you wake up early to take full advantage of the daylight because the sun goes down by 5 30-ish and then it's dark by 6 o'clock. So you don't want to waste your day lying in bed with like beautiful day outside and amazing views of El Salvador. Wake up early. If you're coming here in summer like me, or to be honest, most seasons here, make sure to bring a hat, sunglasses and plenty of sunscreen. And don't forget insect repellent. It's all really important. Guys, this is Brown Boy Travels. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section. If I missed something, please let me know. Also, give me some suggestions about your country. I will see you in the next video. Until then, you have an amazing day ahead. Mwah.